Hey, good morning, everyone. So today we have this train uh, makeup air unit. It's 100% outside air. It's got a gas fired furnace. Um, and the complaint was that the back part of the restaurant was uh, too hot. Even though they already have that unit and that other unit right there. So this was a complaint on this one. And uh, you come up to this unit, give it a look through, right? I was already here two weeks ago and I found the problem, but I'm gonna give you guys a run on of what I found. So number one, it is 98 degrees out. And those are our pressures for a 410A unit. Look at our head, look at our uh, liquid saturation, 80 degrees. So the first thing somebody would say would be like, oh man, you're low on gas, right? But look at your suction. Suction's way too high. So I started giving the unit the old look around. Condenser coil was extremely dirty. Somebody came up and cleaned it. I'm not sure who, but they alleviated that problem for me because I had already brought up my coil cleaner and my coil gun. And um, so we don't have to do that anymore. So anyways, our main issue is uh, this thing's just not gonna cool. 60 degrees saturated. We're not gonna get anything but a 80 degree supplier out of this, if that. So I start looking at my inside unit or my uh, evaporator. Voila. There's your liquid line. It goes into this pipe and then it just goes straight into your distribution piece. No metering device, no nothing. Nothing. So that's why our head pressure is extremely low. That's why our suction pressure is high. See, it actually looks like it's trying to maintain something right now, but we're we're bypassing all the air through that coil, so that's why. That's why that's low. Anyways, so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna see, see if we can't pump this guy down. I really don't like pumping down micro channel coils. I know people say, yeah, I do it all the time, but I, I just don't like it. We'll probably pump it down as much as we can. And uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully we can uh, fit the entire charge in there. And uh, so we're gonna install the TXV in there. And of course, you can hear that. There you go. This belt is uh, it's fucking loose, stretched, whatever. I'd already checked all my uh, pulleys. Everything's good, so we just got a new belt for it as well. Like I said, I was out here about two weeks ago. We submitted a quote. They approved the quote. So that's what we're going to do today. TXV, belt, and uh, we'll get it up and running. All right, let's change of plans. Uh, we don't have a way of isolating the unit so we can change the dryer out. So we're gonna have to recover the entire charge. Change the dryer, install a TXV. All right, that's what this is for. Ooh, got a bunch of ice in there. So, let me go grab my tank. Be right back. Got my recovery tank. <clears throat> I'm gonna pull a vacuum on it. Since we're gonna reuse the same refrigerant, I'm gonna pull a vacuum on it. Uh, we're gonna make sure we purge all our hoses and uh, that way we can uh, uh, purge, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, recover clean refrigerant in here and then we'll be able to put it back. If we have to add any, we'll go with virgin, of course. Um, but as you can see, I already got my hoses set up, liquid and uh, suction to the gauges. It's gonna go in my pump, into the, uh, I call it a sub cooler. I think CPS calls it a molecular transformator, but that's a homemade one. Um, I'm gonna come out here, go straight into the tank. So we'll start recovery here in a minute. And uh, for you guys that 
question a lot of these YouTubers. Yes, I'm gonna flow nitrogen when brazen. Set this up in a minute here. All right, recovery has started. It's not gonna take too long at all. Uh, meanwhile, this is going on. I'm gonna go ahead and start changing that belt out. Right, recovery's been going on for about maybe less than 10 minutes and uh, we're fixing to be done here I already got the belt put in and what I did was since I was given this dryer instead of one of them I'm just gonna cut it back a bit put this one in there not a problem got a little helper today What's up, Spidey? Not much of a talker, but all right. Yeah, so we're getting there, gents. We're getting there. There we go. Let it run for a little bit longer and we'll start working. Okay, so started flowing my nitrogen here. I was already flowing nitrogen. I already cut out piece of pipe I was about to unsweat this and my uh, acetylene regulator is messed up it is it's messed up I gotta go grab one from United or Barsco or something but well hell here I go got our new regulator on and uh, we're ready to unsweat this guy out and uh, see if we can't get this TXV to fit in here See, we can do this one handed, we ain't got no support here. And we are flowing nitrogen right now, gents. Camera fail. Go cut that off. That'll be good to sweating that TXV right there. Place. Um, this sucks. I had to go back to United. I had to get a bushing reducer here from five eighths to half inch, and then a seven eighths to inch and an eighth uh, coupling. So now I'm gonna have to do a brace here, a brace here. One right here and one right here just because this valve is not it's not an original valve here we're just going off of what the information we have if you call train you actually go into train store which this is a train unit they cannot tell you what valve is in here unless I just got some idiots on the counter but that's on them so uh, we got a wet rag I right, but start brazing these joints and then this one right here and we'll be able to pull this one back out a bit and then brace it back here so Give me a second. The beautiful thing I can see on all sides of this uh, solder joint, so it would not be too bad to do.
I didn't get too much video of the brazen, but you guys know how it goes. Brace here, brace here, brace here, brace here. Sorry. And then I did the equalizing tube uh, down to the suction line right here, but I just finished that. Um, I wanted to get video of that, but pretty much what you, what you do is you uh, pressurize your system to about 60 psi, and then uh, you start drilling with a little drill bit, and it'll it'll push all those shavings out. Um, I'm sorry guys, but uh, I thought that this weather was going to catch up to me, but apparently the weather went north, so it's over there now, way over there. I, I thought it was headed this way, so I got lucky. But anyways, I had to hurry up. I didn't want the weather to catch me out here. So anyways, we got the valve uh, sweated in already. Uh, so right now what we're going to do is I'm going to put it in a pressure test and we're going to see if we don't have any leaks in all my joints. Uh, equalizing tube. Liquid line dryer's done. Yeah, when I was at United, I picked up the right one. I didn't want to use that that huge one. Um, so we have a initial pressure of. I'm not sure if the camera can see that's 107. So with 107, let's go ahead and grab our big blue. Let's see how bad of a job I did brazen. Let's see. What's in there? What about right here? Let's see. Let's see if we got any uh, leaks. Check our equalizer tube. so far looking pretty good uh oh I think I just saw one I think I saw a itty bitty leak right there see that little bubble <laughs> yeah that's definitely a leak right there I'm gonna have to hit that one more time Itty bitty, itty bitty, bitty. Seriously, doubt I'm gonna leave a leak on three eighths line. I mean, I'm sorry, half inch line, but it's happened. Whew, still pretty hot. Whew, that one too. so good deal I'm gonna dump it I'm gonna hit that top part one more time and then we'll get that taken care of all right guys I already hit that uh, that little leak again so we're at about uh, 200 psi that big blue. and uh, I already hit this that little leak we had right here um, I made sure I wrapped it with more wet rags before I started. Even though the braze is over here, I still wrapped this valve a few times. I don't want to have to do this all over again because you burnt it. Even there, I will get about... Oh, look, that might work. If I can get it strapped in there, look at that. Possibly might work. Let's see if we can make that happen. It'll probably be a lot better than bringing it out. I really don't want to bring it out unless I have to. And I doubt we can put it up here somewhere on the on the header. So let's see what happens. All right, gentlemen. So I was able to get the sensing bulb right in there. Um, I'm gonna have to insulate that, but that'll be uh, after I'm done with everything else. So right now we've been under pressure for 21 minutes. It says we've lost half a pound. I don't see how that is, is if, oh yeah, we were at 199 and uh, now we're at 200, but these gauges actually take a temperature off of your suction line temp. And if your uh, ambient 
temperature changes, it'll uh, compensate for that. So 22 minutes, we've had about a half pound uh, differential. We're gonna go ahead and call it good. I already rechecked all my joints. Nothing's happening. I don't have any leaks, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, start pulling a vacuum on this. All right, guys, we got the vacuum on. Um, I'm only gonna one true blue it because it's such a short line set. That's a decently small evaporator condenser, but uh, I didn't feel like going and grabbing my uh, Appians out the truck. So we're just gonna do one one hose. So as soon as we hit as close as possible to 500 in the next couple minutes, we're gonna send it. Disclaimer guys, this guy's not gonna hit 500 microns today. Mm. All right, gentlemen, unit has started. Pressures are looking much better. And we still gotta add some charge. We're about a very, very little uh, sub cool. We're just gonna slowly add it in. I'm gonna get it to about eight degrees and I'm gonna let it run for a few minutes just because I do not want to overcharge. So I've been playing with this valve for a little bit. Um, still a little bit high on the superheat. I wanna get about 12 degrees and I wanna get about 10 on the sub cool. So uh, I'm gonna open up that valve another quarter turn and we'll see where we end up. But we're getting close, man. We're getting pretty close to where we wanna be. All right, gentlemen, adjusted it one last time. We got about 10 degrees of subcool, about 15 degrees of superheat. Now, I know that I want to get about 12, but uh, I think that this is going to be good enough. Our subcool is really good. Superheat, I'll, I'll let the valve I'm gonna leave it. Down. See that? It's dropping back down to 14. That valve's going to modulate just the way it's supposed to. Got a 39 degree saturation, 112 condensing. We're good, man. I like these numbers. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it. So that's it, gents. I've been up here in the sun all day. I'm actually on call tonight. So I'm gonna pick up all my crap. Uh, take everything off the roof. You see I already got all my stuff over there. And get out of here. So once again, gentlemen, thank you for watching. We'll see you guys on the next one.